Welcome to Kingdom Builders, the channel that's all about helping you to live out of the right side and share your message. The right side is the Kingdom of God. Welcome to Rediscovering the Kingdom, Chapter 7, Kings, Prophets, and the Kingdom. Everything God says and does relates to his kingdom. The entire Bible deals with the kingdom of God. From Genesis to Revelation, Scripture reveals God as the great and almighty King of heaven and earth, resolutely at work on his plan of the ages. God's plan is to reverse and destroy the works of the devil and fully restore his rule over the earthly realm through his human representatives. We have already said that the Bible is not about religion, but about a kingdom. In recent years, the focus in much of the body of Christ has shifted away from the kingdom of God to other issues. In these modern times, we are often worse off than the people of Old Testament times when it comes to matters of understanding the kingdom of God and how our world relates to it. Perhaps no one in the Old Testament received more revelation and insight about God's kingdom than did the prophet Daniel. As a matter of fact, the entire focus of the book of Daniel involves the sovereignty of the kingdom of God over the kingdoms of men. Several times throughout the book, the strength and will of earthly kings are pitted against the strength and will of God, and God comes out on top every time. Among Daniel's gifts was the God-given ability to interpret dreams, which he did on several occasions. In one instance, King Nebuchadnezzar had a puzzling and disturbing dream he could not understand. Daniel was given the interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar had seen a great statue with a head of gold, a chest and arms of silver, abdomen and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and feet made partly of iron and partly of clay. Then a stone cut out with no human hand smashed the feet of iron and clay and proceeded to break the rest of the statue into tiny pieces which the wind blew away. After this, the stone grew into a great mountain that filled the whole earth. This is in Daniel chapter 2 verses 31 through 35. After describing the king's dream, Daniel explained that the different parts of the statue represented different kingdoms that would arise in the earth. Biblical scholars generally agree that except for the feet of iron mixed with clay, the various segments of the statue refer to kingdoms and empires that have come and gone on the earth. The final kingdom represented by the feet of iron and clay may be here now. According to the book of Revelation, it is from this governmental system that the beast and the Antichrist will arise. The kingdom of God is represented by the stone that will smash and blow away all the other kingdoms. This stone will grow to fill the whole earth and will last forever. When Jesus came, he spoke of the rock in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. He said, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Jesus Christ himself, the Anointed One, and the anointing given to us, was the rock upon which his church would be built. The rock is the revelation of Christ in us. The kingdom, which is made up of his Anointed Ones, was the rock in Nebuchadnezzar's dream that crushed all the kingdoms of the earth to dust. His is the kingdom made without human hands that will last forever. Chapter 7 of the book of Daniel relates a dream and vision that came to Daniel himself that reveals the character and awesome majesty of the kingdom of God. Daniel saw a procession of four frightening beasts rising from the sea. The first was like a lion with wings of an eagle. The wings were stripped off and the beast stood on two legs and was given the heart of a man. Daniel 7, 4. Next came a creature that looked like a bear. Following this was a beast that looked like a leopard 
except it had four heads and four wings like bird's wings on its back. The fourth beast was the most terrifying of all, with huge iron teeth that crushed and devoured its victims, and it had ten horns. As Daniel watched, three of the horns were uprooted and replaced by one smaller horn which had eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth that spoke boastfully. That's found in Daniel 7 verse 8. These four beasts, and the fourth one in particular, represented the demonic and satanic forces that lie behind the power, wickedness, and corruption of many kingdoms of the world. As terrifying as these creatures appear to be, the next scene in Daniel's dream puts them in their proper perspective. What follows assures us of both a certain defeat of Satan and the absolute triumph of the kingdom of God. As I looked, thrones were set in place and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousands times ten thousands stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Daniel 7, 9-14 What an awesome scene this is! revealing the King of Heaven and all his glory. The Ancient of Days took his seat in the midst of thrones, thousands of them. Thrones are for rulers, and these thrones were the seats of authority for the kingly citizens of the kingdom, the king's court. Daniel saw many kings, but then the King of Kings entered, and all the focus was on him. These verses at least imply that those who occupy the thrones around the king were also among those who attended him. Here was a scene unlike anything ever found on the earth. Kings attending the king. Rulers taking care of the ruler. Earthly kings have servants and advisors attending them. The king of kings, the ancient of days, has kings as his attendants. After the Ancient of Days took his place, the court was seated and the books were opened. This is a scene of judgment, not judging men, but of Satan. Satan was judged, his power destroyed, and his body thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts are also stripped of their authority, but allowed to live for a little while. What this means for us is that even though Satan and the forces of darkness are still around to harass us if we let them, their power and authority over us has been broken. They have already been judged. Their final destruction awaits the confirmation of all things with a return of Jesus, but it is as certain as though it had already happened. This is why we do not have to surrender to defeat, despair, or helplessness in our daily lives. We can live in victory and walk in confidence because the power of our enemy has been broken. Immediately after this in Daniel's dream, the reason for Satan's destruction becomes clear. One like a son of man 
coming with the cloud of heaven, approaches the Ancient of Days and is led into his presence. This is a direct reference to Jesus, 500 years before he was born. Jesus' preferred title for himself was the Son of Man. Through his death on the cross and resurrection from the dead, Jesus, the Son of Man, conquered Satan and broke his power and authority forever. With this victory, he entered heaven triumphantly, where he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. And he was worshipped by peoples of all nations and ruled in everlasting dominion, a kingdom that will never be destroyed. This picture is very similar to Paul's words about Jesus in Philippians. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father philippians chapter 2 verses 8 through 11. daniel was deeply affected by this vision not just the sheer power and majesty of the images themselves but also by the mystery surrounding them daniel longed to know what they meant i daniel was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all of this. So he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth, but the holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever, yes, forever and ever. Daniel 7, 15 through 18. Although the four beasts represented four human kingdoms that were to rise, that is not the most important point. What's important is the promise in verse 18 that the saints, the children of God, will receive and possess his kingdom forever, infinitely longer than the tenure of worldly kingdoms no matter how great and powerful they may appear. Daniel then wanted to know the meaning of the fourth and most terrible beast, as well as the meaning behind the ten horns on its head, and the one horn with eyes and a mouth that replaced three of the original ten. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them, until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the Most High, and the time came when they possessed the kingdom. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on the earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and would devour the whole earth, trampling it down and crushing it. The ten horns are the ten kings who will come from this kingdom. After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and a half a time. But the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever. Then the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all rulers will worship and obey him. This is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts, and my face turned pale but I kept the matter to myself. Daniel 7, 21 through 28. What did we, the human race, lose at the fall? Heaven? No, we did not come from heaven, nor were we created for heaven. 
We were created from the dust of the earth to rule over the earth. What we lost at the fall was not heaven, but the kingdom. Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, not so much to take us to heaven as to bring us back into possession of the kingdom we lost. When we receive it, we will possess it forever and ever. Thank you for watching. If this video was encouraging or helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.